We've embedded ourselves in this fridge. We've embedded the weapon about an inch deep into the side of that refrigerator. Yeah. I've been interested in robots essentially my whole life. I've been tearing apart and putting back together electrical and mechanical things since I was three or four years old, starting in my grandpa's basement. And it wasn't long after that that I really got an attraction to the complex electronics and, and mechanics that go into robotics projects. I'm Ricky Willems, and I'm the team captain of Team Mammoth. Weighing in at 58 pounds and As a kid, I came across the TV show BattleBots. You'd have these huge machines tearing into each other and that just really captured my imagination, my fascination, and uh, I really just dreamed of being on that show. I mean, that was, that was the coolest thing that I had ever seen. Backlash, heavy favorite throughout BattleBots. Dostbot with those foam pads. Bye -bye, you can foam. see that worked real well against the spinning wheel. So in the years that followed, I started working on other projects, hybrid vehicles, um, electric cars, that sort of thing. And I, I drifted away from BattleBots a little bit until the show came back on TV. And it, it kind of rekindled this, this interest. I said to myself, I, I really need to go out and see this lot. I don't know if I'm gonna get another shot. I have to see this in person. The competition, being out there, just, just seeing it as a spectator was, was an inspiring event for me. I realized that I, I really need to commit to this and I need to make this happen. What I really wanted to do was build something that had not been seen before. And I had this design in mind that was a combination of some of my, my childhood favorite robots. Uh, a big framed design that came in and kind of towered over other robots, but uh, rather than a, a big spinning disc or, or some other kind of uh, aggressive weapon that, that tears opponents apart, I wanted something that lifted robots up, threw them across the room, uh, turned them on their head, and took all those spinning weapons and, and caused them to destroy themselves when they hit the ground or the floor or the walls of the arena. In the Red Square, this bot was built by a guy with a dream who watched BattleBots on his TV screen. In 2019, when we came to BattleBots with Mammoth, everything was an experience. It was it really shook me as a person and as a designer and as a builder. I had recently broken my hand, so I was relying heavily on the rest of my team I was in pain, everything was kind of a blur. The robot was really hard to drive. I had the math to show that it would be able to do something impressive, but I didn't know exactly what that was gonna be. When we fought Axe backwards, we came out swinging, and they kind of bounced out off of us five or six times. We didn't know what was gonna happen next. At one point, we hook one of the axes on Axe Backwards' uh, tail, and we were able to hoist Axe Backwards up in the air, eventually toss him completely out of the arena, which was an awesome spectacle. The crowd went wild. It was an absolute, absolute blast. He's getting it done with just one hand here. Oh! Knockout in your BattleBots debut, man. Congratulations. Thank you. Mammoth was not able to get past the first uh, preliminary fights that seed you into the tournament. We had four fights, two wins, two losses, but our wins weren't against robots that were kind of high tier robots. And it put us just out of the reach of that top 16 bracket. It was a crushing loss and uh, it really highlighted the need to improve the robot for, for following seasons. I imagine that Mammoth will be back maybe even bigger and better next season. She's hot. Good. Yep. All right. Three, two, one, drive testing. The big ticket items coming out of 2019 was to improve the speed of the robot, improve the power of the weapon, and improve the resiliency of the chassis. Woo! 
We had a lot of trouble trying to find off-the-shelf components that were able to deliver the power handling capabilities, the voltage and the current that's required for the weapon that's in Mammoth. This is our contactor that we used in previous iterations of Mammoth. And this allows us to switch on and off our weapon motor. It, uh, it uses mechanical movements, which can always be a point of failure. And uh, just generally, it's large, it's heavy, and we did not have room for it in this year's Mammoth. Over the course of two or three months, I was able to use Altium software to develop a speed controller bespoke for Mana that was able to handle the kind of current and power required for, for Mana's weapon motor. This is a speed controller. It takes about 60 volts in and dumps about 1600 amps into our uh, large weapon motor on Mammoth. And it only weighs about half a pound. That saves us three and a half pounds on Mammoth that we can put into armor, we can put more into our weapon, we can put into high priority, critical reliability, and uh, damaging components. Yep, weapon is hot. All right, drive is hot, let's do this. The weapon has four times the power that it had of last year. Our drive speed is dramatically increased. Last year, we were lucky to get eight miles an hour out of Mammoth. This year, we're at a blistering 30 miles per hour. We're gonna try and toss this refrigerator up in the air, see what kind of height we can get. It probably won't pop the Freon. It'll probably just go flying. In the 2020 season, Mammoth really needs to come out swinging. To be honest, we need to move up to the big leagues. We need to take out high-level robots with big names behind them and be able to prove that we belong in the top 16 robots to get our chance at the championship. Thank you for watching Altium Stories. If you enjoyed what you've seen, please give us a like and share the video, and don't forget to subscribe. We'd love to hear what you think, so please leave a comment in the section below.